Hello, this is Steve with Renesis Timing University. In this video, I am going to be talking about frequency and phase locking in the PLL. Customers will commonly ask us, what is the PLL lock time? How long does it take? Well, one of the most important things to consider is what are the criteria for lock? We could look at the frequency offset, we could look at the phase settling time, and it really depends on the application. For example, in radio applications, there's requirements for a certain PPM offset to then establish that the PLL has been locked. Or in sync applications, we need to take a look at phase. So let me show you some of the mechanisms used by the PLL and also that we uh, measure in the lab to determine whether a PLL is locked. So let's review the PLL again. We have the phase detector, the loop filter, and the phase detector is determining kind of the phase offset between the, uh, the input and the feedback. This feeds information to a loop filter. The loop filter is going to use a control voltage to speed up or slow down the VCO. So in some of our RF PLLs, we actually take a look at this control voltage. So the input to the VCO is going to be this voltage and there's going to be a corresponding frequency for that voltage. So as we increase the voltage, the frequency increases. And as we decrease the, the voltage, the frequency decreases. So if the PLL is railed low, for example, the input is gone, the loop filter is going to set the maximum low voltage that it can. So that voltage going into a VCO will be low. Now, conversely, if the frequency is too high, it's going to set the voltage too high. So there's the low and the high kind of range of the VCO. So what we can do is inside the device, we can set a comparator to say, if the voltage is within this intermediate range, then we know it's not railed low, and it's not real high, but the VCO is good. So that's actually one of the criteria that our RF PLLs use to determine if the VCO is locked. Now, customers may have a more stringent request because sometimes when in radio applications, for example, in our Sedona AV97003 device, um, we have to frequency hop. So that comp, uh, there is a common request to jump from one frequency to the other. So customers commonly want to know how long does it take to get from one frequency to the other. Now that's when we have to establish criteria. What is the permissible PPM offset that we need to be for the second frequency? See, because when we switch the feedback divider and it starts to jump to the next frequency, there is some settling time. So we can establish a window and say if it's within, let's say, 10 ppm, then it's good enough. So we measure the start point and we set in our lab, we measure the new frequency and we measure at the time at which the deviation enters this window, then we say it's locked. But this is a frequency lock. In other words, we can even say, um, instead of having 10 ppm, we want one part per billion. So you make this even a very <laughs> tight, uh, I'm just exaggerating one part per billion. But what that means is it might take the PLL longer to settle in to that very tight frequency window. So the tighter the lock criteria, the longer the lock time. Um, if the lock, if the frequency criteria is very loose, so let's say it's very loose, then this window opens up and now that PLL, PLL would say lock faster. So it's not that the frequency settles faster, it's just the criteria has changed. But then sync applications, actually it's necessary to look at the phase relationship on the output. So it's very similar, but instead of looking at the frequency, we look at the phase over time. So we can have a phase and the PLL starts to lock 
and it kind of can settle at the phase. Um, we will then set uh, criteria to determine if the phase is actually locked. So again, here we talked about frequency. And uh, if you want to understand the relationship between phase and frequency, there's another video that talks about that and explains how these two are related. But again, if the phase, and we're looking at this output, it's settling, if we have a very uh, loose criteria, then we could say the log time is very short. But we could also not only set some criteria of how uh, wide the allowable phase is allowed to be, but we can also set a window of how long this uh, phase remains within the window. So let's say we were to tighten that, we were to make it like this. Well, in that case, the PLL would enter the allowable phase offset and it would think it's locked here, but then it would report that it's unlocked and then locked, locked here, unlocked, and then it would settle inside that window eventually. So it would, you would see unlock here, lock for this window of time here, unlock, lock, unlock, and then finally lock. So this, uh, this ripple is affected by basically the dampening of the PLL and um, how, um, how much ringing there is when it's settling. So again, we can also set a window to say, um, what if I want to avoid this uh, false lock detect? I can set a window and say, I want the window to be this wide. And if this uh, signal is not within that range for this amount of time, then I'm not gonna declare a lock. So here, um, it enters the lock range, but only for a short window of time, only this amount of time. So it hasn't met that criteria. So we go here, again, this, this is in the lock range, but for only just a short window of time. Now here it enters again. So we're not gonna get any lock until it enters here. And at this point we start to count and we look at this window, which we said, okay, this is how long it has to be inside these boundaries. And so we say like, okay, here it is locked because it's within the window and for the amount of time that we needed it to be within that plus or minus window. So again, we've looked at three different criteria for determining if a PLL is locked. We can look at like voltage uh, inside the, de the device, and this is automatically reported by the device with a lock pin. Uh, we can look at a frequency settling time. This actually requires some equipment, and we measure this in our lab. And if you need to know this, we can capture it for you. Uh, but we also can look at phase lock and our sync devices have uh, more sophisticated lock criteria. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you take time to watch more of our videos at Renesis Timing University.